Right. Uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning, everyone. So we're having our uh, online session for today. Okay. In fact, two more classes, I guess. This week, uh, most of the lecturers have to conduct their classes online. Okay. But for us, let's continue with uh, the second part of topic number two. Okay, yeah, let me share with you nice PowerPoint. Okay, um I I guess we stopped after we discussed uh, the case study of Big Pay um last week. Okay, whereby uh is one of the uh, e-wallets, okay, e-wallets uh, provider in Malaysia. Okay, so next I would like to share with you uh, another case study. Okay, another case study in, in terms of uh, the payment. Okay, uh, the provider of uh, e-payments. Okay, especially when we talk about uh, about payment as well. In the case of PayPal. Okay, American uh okay. Hopefully you can you can hear the, the sound of the video. Eh? If not, let me know. Okay, so this is a video related uh, some introduction and history of PayPal before we summarize what is PayPal is all about afterwards. Doctor, tak ada suara. Tak suara, eh? Sebab I pun tak dengar ni. Sekejap, eh? <laughs> Let me see, eh? Sekejap. American tech company that manages an online payment. PayPal is an American fintech company that manages an online payment system, serving as an electronic alternative to traditional paper methods, such as checks and money transfers. The company operates as a payment processor for online merchants, auction sites, and various other commercial users, charging fees for its services. Initially founded in December 1998 as Confinity by Max Levchin, Peter Thiel, and Luke Nosak, the company developed software for portable device security but shifted its focus to digital wallets after initial business struggles. The first version of the PayPal electronic payment system was launched in 1999. In March 2000, Confinity merged with X.com, an online financial services company founded by Ellen Moss, Harris Fricker, Christopher Payne, and Ed Ho. Within eight months, from January to August 2000, PayPal's user base surged from 12,000 to 2.7 million accounts. In October of the same year, Musk decided to focus exclusively on PayPal, discontinuing other internet banking operations of X.com. Shortly after, Peter Thiel replaced Elon Musk as the CEO of X.com, which was soon rebranded as PayPal and went public in 2002. PayPal debuted on the stock exchange 
under the ticker symbol PYPL at $13 per share, closing its first trading day at $20. Soon after its IPO, eBay acquired PayPal for $1.5 billion in stock. Over 70% of eBay transactions started to go through PayPal, making it the default payment method for most users. In 2005, PayPal acquired VeriSign's payment solution to enhance security. In 2007, a partnership with MasterCard led to the development and launch of PayPal Secure Card, allowing customers to make payments on websites that didn't directly accept PayPal. By the end of 2007, the company's revenue reached $1.8 billion. In January 2008, PayPal acquired the Israeli startup Fraud Sciences, specializing in online risk management tools, for $169 million. By 2010, PayPal had over 100 million active user accounts in 190 markets, supporting 25 different currencies. In 2011, PayPal transitioned its business to allow in-store payments, becoming the default payment method for eBay users. By the end of that year, PayPal processed more than $145 billion in payments, accounting for 40% of eBay's revenue. In 2012, PayPal partnered with Discover Card, enabling payments at any of Discover's 7 million stores. In June 2014, David Marcus announced his departure as the company's president, succeeded by Dan Schulman. On September 30th, 2014, eBay announced a spin-off of PayPal into a separate public company, a move advocated by a major shareholder, Carl Econ. The spin-off was completed on July 18th, 2015. Dan Schulman became the current president and CEO, and former eBay CEO John Donahoe became the chairman. On July 1st, 2015, PayPal acquired Zoom Corporation, a digital money transfer company for $1.09 billion, strengthening its international business. In September 2015, PayPal launched its peer-to-peer -peer payment platform, PayPal.me, allowing users to send customized money request links via text and email. By early 2018, PayPal had 170 million users. In early 2019, PayPal partnered with Instagram for the checkout on Instagram feature. In January 2020, PayPal acquired Honey for over $4 billion, its largest acquisition to date. In October 2020, PayPal introduced a new service, allowing customers to use cryptocurrencies for purchases at 26 million merchants. Starting in 2021, PayPal used Paxos Trust to provide server infrastructure, enabling users to manage and trade cryptocurrencies, with Paxos handling necessary regulatory approvals. As of 2023, PayPal operates in 202 markets and has 426 million active registered accounts. The company facilitates online financial transactions, enabling electronic fund transfers between individuals and businesses. Through PayPal, users can make payments for online auctions, buy or sell goods and services, and donate or receive donations in 25 currencies worldwide. PayPal is an American fintech. Okay. Right, so basically that's uh if our history like see that okay, um so as you recall from the video just now. PayPal play a very important role eh, when we talk about the uh, the growth and the and its role in the global, especially when we talk about online business, eh, the e-commerce. Okay, again, uh, some history uh, recap from the videos founded in 1998 as Confinity. Okay, but the 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 company's PayPal also only rebranded uh, about three years later lah. Okay, as PayPal in two thousand and one. Okay, if you again remember Confinity too, they merge dengan X dot com, uh, founded by Elon Musk. 
and then they just uh, re rebrand as PayPal in 2001. And later in 2002, um, they acquired by eBay. Okay, acquired by eBay for $1.5 billion. Okay, and when we talk about eBay as one of the largest e-commerce lah, one of the largest, not the largest. Obviously, later on you 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 memang dah familiar maybe uh with Amazon. Okay, but before that we have eBay juga lah. It's one of the major player. Okay, and eBay acquired and ataupun they bought PayPal for one point five billion from the shareholders. Okay, um, and in two thousand fifteen, okay. Uh, the shareholders decided to sp spin off, spin off them basically to separate, okay, separate eBay from PayPal. So money PayPal then become independent. So they take out uh, PayPal Claw from eBay punya, uh, company and uh, operates independently lah, as a public trading company. And among the key milestones that they, they, they explained that the company had a trade in 25 currencies, uh, expanded to over 200 countries that use uh, PayPal accounts. And along the way, okay, uh, they acquired several companies that had a cheetah for Sahani, had a cheetah for Zoom, okay, and they integrated into major e commerce platforms like Shopify and eBay. Lah. So eBay is even part of them uh, earlier. Yeah, but now they move separately. So it's provide buyers and sellers with secure encrypted transactions, boosting trust in online commerce. I already mentioned to you one of the key reasons uh, why PayPal is so successful because number one, it's one of the major default payment option uh, below you shop, for example, in eBay. Again. So one of the... Uh, default payments ataupun uh, selalunya as a, as a seller you can decide what kind of payment you want to receive some uh, seller contohnya can decide okay I, I accept any types of payment it can be cash it can be online transfer it can be PayPal or they can accept uh, direct credit cards contohnya okay but uh, as one of the preferred option usually either for seller or even the buyer is by having PayPal because of the security, as I mentioned. Okay, as a seller, um, you know the account, sorry, the, the customer will be buyer, they can masuk in the PayPal account. So once it's in PayPal account, you know it's secure, lah. it's not a fraud for your transactions. Unlike kalau kita buat uh, online banking, they do you know, some scam ataupun yeah, uh, modified receipt, ke, for example. So it's not really. Uh, secure lah. Tapi if you talk about PayPal, bila masuk the money in PayPal, you know it's a secure. Sama juga lah as a buyer, you purchase from unknown seller. Okay, you make your payment to somebody you don't know. So if something happened to the transactions, you can make complaints, make file for your claims, and then uh, you can get your refunds. So both ways uh, beneficial lah for both buyers and seller. Okay, so supports 25 plus currencies, as I mentioned, making it easier for global transactions. So they include some exchange as well. So when you in Malaysia, uh, using Malaysian cards, and uh, obviously if you want to uh, purchase using US dollars or British pound, for example, they can make uh, transactions very easily. Okay, and facilitating uh, digital commerce simplifies the checkout process. They have what they call as a one touch, one touch checkout. Okay, uh, if you want to purchase something from uh, satu website ni, contohnya, you tak pernah register pun with the website. Okay, but they offer you uh, PayPal option, contohnya. So you check out. Just using your PayPal account, contohnya. So, but PayPal ni dia ada ya, your detail, your your names, your address, your email address. So, without having to register with the e-commerce in your site, you, you make payment using PayPal. You sign in, you can click one touch PayPal, terus dia dah ada all of your information and then send it to the seller. Okay, tanpa perlu you register with the 
with the website contohnya lah so it's very easy facilitate the digital commerce punya experience okay and obviously increase the conversion rates so. okay empowering small businesses uh the the impact obviously global reach okay so but people operates in a lot of countries so small businesses have access to international markets without needing complex banking solutions but PayPal ni sendiri dah act as a bank eh, per se to receive payments and to to apa to transfer payments as well lower barrier to entry small businesses can start accepting payment without needing expensive merchant accounts yes um, as a business account you have to pay lah some small fees to PayPal but still consider cheaper than opening uh, a foreign uh, accounts in overseas for example right uh fraud protection as i mentioned tadi lah offers by and seller protection reducing the case of fraud in e-commerce so small business can enjoy this lah as well and on top of that they support freelancers as well okay freelancers ni yang uh, offer some products and services uh either on part-time basis ataupun as an independent parties so they they provide in terms of easy invoicing and uh, payment collection sebab uh, PayPal dia ada dia punya default template lah for invoicing dia akan send out a default invoice uh, to the to the buyer contohnya ataupun to the to the service uh, receiver and the bila dia bagi invoice uh, to the to the customer so the customer just click on the link and then straight away make the payment via PayPal and as a freelancer they will receive the payment immediately okay so it reduce the payment delays as well whereby it allow freelancers to bypass uh, as a, as we discussed earlier banking punya delays lah yang akan ambil masa so they can shorten the time in terms of the payments and the impact on the gig economy okay there are some platforms mungkin uh, more popular in overseas like Fiverr Fiverr ni is a term in the UK okay uh we know in the uk kalau the official uh, official currency is called uh british pound and at pound sterling kan. so when you go to the shop okay the seller boleh kata okay it's five pound ataupun it's a ten pound tapi in terms of slang okay if you go to a certain areas okay five pound to is like i said it's a official ataupun a formal way to to say okay it's five pound please okay but uh for for the informal way ataupun slang for five pound is a fiver okay it's a fiver even though it's not double r lah tapi it's a fiver so when, when the seller kata it's a, it's a fiver so it means it's five pounds ataupun kalau dia ten pound you can say it's a tenner okay so that's, that's just a slang lah so they come out the slang and then they gunakan fiver too as a company lah so for uh, fiver fiver ni is a uh platform ataupun uh yalah online platforms for freelancers so as a freelance you would advertise your uh, your service okay to employ employee pula to the to the uh, customers uh, outside whereby you boleh offer lah what kind of services yang you boleh services like plumber okay if you offer plumbing services if you want to offer aircon uh account service you want to offer any sorts of jobs lah as a part time ataupun sometimes you can be a full time punya uh work tapi you you advertise your services in this kind of uh platforms Fiverr and Upwork ni lebih kurang sama lah cuma they are two separate companies in Malaysia we have we have similar let me see I nah see whether i still have the app yeah some stop uh some of the thingy um apps at phone companies that offer similar right similar uh services but i think i save it or oh, i deleted already if i'm not mistaken one of them is called kau team very malaysian kau team 
sure whether they still have it or not. Let's try and look at the app store. Yeah. Mm, Recommend.my, for example, is one of those okay, whereby you can uh, advertise your cleaning services. Sometimes kita ada uh part-time mate tu kan whereby dia datang during the weekend saja so you can advertise that uh cleaning services repairs renovation uh, so to the recommend of my um yeah dulu ada kau team sure they still have it or not tapi recommend of my to still there yeah, and there are some other platforms yang offers uh something hero i think yeah Okay, but you get you get the idea lah. Tapi one of the yang active lagi I tak nampak tadi is recommend dot my. Okay, so similar lah uh, to the Fiverr and our. So for at C ni pula, dia is just like mudah lah. Our mudah, whereby oh mudah, eh. mudah dot com ataupun ataupun even um, Shopee. It's not really as Shopee lah. Tapi I think it's more on mudah lah at C. Okay, so these platforms rely heavily on PayPal. Okay, for freelancers payment, whereby as small businesses, freelancers, it provides a very trusted system. That's why you can see the number, the growth of the users is keep on increasing every single year because they cannot uh, just focus on eBay alone, for example. So they have to expand okay, their businesses to cater more customers. So the main impact for small businesses, uh, it's been uh, impacting about 76% of uh, American small businesses whereby they offer online payment systems. And obviously in fact, in terms of their business growth and in terms of freelancers adoption is about 40% of global freelancers. Okay, 40% all, uh, all over the world, even uh, maybe not in Malaysia. Lah. Malaysia still we prefer online transfer and whatnot. Okay, we seldom use PayPal. The reason being, maybe because as a as a as a seller in Malaysia, we tend to uh, prefer the free options because, as I mentioned, PayPal ni they are the fees. If you want to offer PayPal punya service to the customer, you have to pay some minimal fees. I tak ingat berapa berapa percent. Very minimal, about one or two percent. Uh, so as a small business, sometimes they cannot absorb this uh, uh, this fees as part of their cost. So they in Malaysia we tend to prefer online transfer whereby it's free. Okay, so maybe maybe that's why, in terms of the global markets, uh, PayPal still can only get about forty percent sahaja lah. Okay, right. So. In terms of the global market share, as of 2023, PayPal holds approximately 22% of the global online pay payment market. Okay. And over 435 million active users worldwide as of quarter two in 2024. So as of uh, first six months of uh, 2024, we had about 435 million active users. And in terms of volume, so you can see the amount uh, is about 1.36 trillion in the total payment volume. So it's very huge uh, transactions uh, by PayPal alone. So PayPal is one of the, I can say, uh, pioneer when we talk about payment system. Okay, payment system uh, in the digital era. So in terms of the integr integration and usage, it is uh, the preferred payment method, as I said. Uh, more than 30% online shoppers using PayPal as a checkout due to, as I mentioned, the security features and convenience. And one of the most preferred mobile payment system handling over 50% of mobile transactions in e-commerce. And it's very easy. I myself have PayPal since, I don't know, 2008, I guess. 
walaupun dah tak guna sekerap dulu I still have the account so, it's not it's not like um, macam tashengo lah tashengo you have to uh, you have to reload your money in order for you to use scan so untuk PayPal ni dia link with your you, they still link with your credit cards okay they still link with your credit cards So whenever you spend, baru dia akan uh, tarik your money from the credit card and then transfer over to the to the to the seller contohnya, okay ataupun to the receiver of funds. Okay, unlike Touch and Go or Boost or whatever yang Malaysian punya style, we have to reload. Okay, so most like most like a prepaid punya style, but PayPal ni dia link directly with your card. Okay, so that's the main difference. So you do have to park your money in the in the account uh, and then make the apa, company use your money. Okay, macam mereka kalau kat Malaysia ni mostly using uh, prepaid style lah whereby you reload your money. Okay, so with e-commerce expanding, especially post-pandemic, sebab during COVID-19, e-commerce memang booming even further because people cannot go out to shop. So we have to rely on online. Uh, punya transactions so PayPal's punya transactions memang keep on increasing lah especially post pandemic like now okay so that's PayPal the second uh, case study the second case study and I, and I, I can say lah one of the largest uh, payment system okay digital payment system out there so besides that okay we have P2P peer-to-peer -peer payment and if you watch video just now pun PayPal offer that kind of service peer-to-peer -peer, meaning, meaning you want to make payment from individuals to another individuals without having to go into bank as intermediary. So dia ada macam-macam lah Venmo, Sell and Cash App allows this kind of transfer. So in Malaysia we have this uh, Do It Now lah as a leading P2P payment platform. Okay and Do It Now ni you can transfer not only using bank account you can use your IC numbers or mobile phone as well untuk transfer money. Okay, so this service has made it easier for friends, family, or even small businesses to exchange money okay, for services or goods. And then in terms of another payment system in the current digital era is the cryptocurrency. Okay, again, if you go into PayPal's new video just now, they mentioned they offer this cryptocurrency whereby they join dengan Paxos tadi kan. But in Malaysia, we have Luno. Okay, Luno enable users to trade and store cryptocurrencies. Even though um, the option ataupun the mode for you to transfer out your Bitcoin, dia by default dia akan disable. Okay, they disable because they want to avoid any uh, potential from scam. Okay, from scam. So, but you can uh, enable. Okay, but obviously uh, based on your own option lah. Okay, dia by default, dia, dia disable, okay, to avoid, like I said, uh, scam in activities. So, cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum provide a decentralized alternative to payment system. And in overseas, Tesla and Microsoft are also experimenting uh, with accepting cryptocurrencies in certain regions. Okay, there are some regions that allow these cryptocurrencies when you exchange. Kat Malaysia, we are not so open to this just yet. Okay, as a form of investment, as a form of uh, holding the currencies, yes. But in terms of trading ataupun accepting it as a mode of payment, still kita kat Malaysia tak, tak, tak fully uh, launch yet lah untuk accepting cryptocurrencies as a payment method. Okay, another uh, form of payments is based on social media. Okay, platform such as uh, Facebook, Messenger, WeChat allows users to send money in between contacts whereby they integrate payments into social interactions. Okay, so WeChat obviously in China is very popular so they grow very fast. So they allow payments even uh, Meta, sorry Meta, WeChat ni you can use to make payments for retail purchases as well. Okay, and for America, kalau China ada WeChat, in America they have Meta lah, Meta Pay for example, available in selected regions, making easier for people again to send money or even to make payments 
without switching to a separate payment service. Okay. And if you recall tadi, uh, initially dulu, PayPal pun is part of this lah, MetaPay ni. Because dia join dengan Instagram to make uh, social media payment ni. And as you all know, uh, Instagram tu is part of Meta as well. Okay, so yeah. Dia dah grow lah into MetaPay now. Okay, another method of payment yang mungkin kita tak pernah dengar sebelum ni, nano payments. Nano tu, the the terms nano tu pun dah menunjukkan is small. So, nano payment, it basically means small transactions, small payments. Okay, as simple as 1 ringgit, 2 ringgit, 5 ringgit, for example, uh, typically used in digital content monetization. Okay, so usually nano payment ni associated with tipping content. Okay, some social media influencers ke whatever buat buat content and then dia kata okay, please donate. Dia okay, bagi tip contohnya. One ringgit, two ringgit using uh, Patreon. Okay, some I've seen this Patreon uh, for content creators yang buat content, I don't know, uh, some videos ke contohnya. So, if you want to support uh, the content, please donate. So, they the platform usually they use is Patreon, okay. And in Southeast Asia, especially Indonesia, Indonesia uh, provide this, they call it Sawiria, 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 whereby it allows fans to support creators with small monetary contributions. Okay, and Sawiria ni pun also available in Malaysian market as well. So, these platforms are particularly important for digital artists, even uh, freelancers tadi, content creators in order to get money. Uh, instead of transfer dalam bank account, masuk dalam this Patreon ataupun Saweria in order for them to receive payments. Okay. That's payment part. So, whatever we've discussed last class, sampai so far, semuanya melibatkan payments. Okay, make payments. Dari segi e-wallets nya, dari segi uh, digital wallet, dari segi uh, e-payments, dari segi apa tadi um, uh, Digital content, social media punya social media based payments, nano payments and whatnot. Okay, now we move on to remittance. Okay, money transfers. So remittance are money transfers made by individuals, typically uh, migrant workers, students. Okay, uh, back to their home countries okay so remittances are critical to the economies of many developing uh, developing countries including malaysia whereby remittances are very important uh, uh, for economic activity especially for foreign workers okay as you all know malaysian rely juga on foreign workers especially for um, unskilled or even skilled labors okay to countries like Indonesia, Nepal, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and so on. Even kalau yang uh, skilled labors, maybe even to China. So there are a lot of foreign workers, okay, international expatriate who works in Malaysia, and then they want to send back monies to their uh, home countries. Okay. So initially, ataupun historically, the traditional remittance is one of the option whereby they have to go to the bank initially uh, to transfer. And as as you recall during last class pun kita dah cakap one of the key factors why we have this digital punya option because of time consuming lah and of course the cost is quite expensive. So in Malaysia during those time, besides the bank, eh, bank memang memang ada offer remittance, but they have services like Western Union and MoneyGram. Okay, that they offer these kind of services to the foreign workers. However, nowadays digital alternatives are quickly uh, becoming more popular, and therefore we have these digital remittance platforms as an alternative. So fintech has transformed remittance by offering digital platforms. Okay, as I mentioned sebelum ni, myself pun pernah guna WISE before this. Okay, we have Remitly, pun another uh, online platform that can reduce the cost. And the most important part is actually, it's very fast. Okay, I dah bagi example last time. Money transferred from US to Malaysian account takes less than one hour. Okay, as I said before, kalau nak, nak compare before, 
if we talk about banks, it will take two, three days sometimes, okay, to transfer funds, right? So in Malaysian context, we have Merchant Trade, okay, another uh, online platform lah for digital remittance eh, together with value that may make it more, uh, yeah, accessible, easier and cheaper for workers to send money, and it can be done online via. Yeah, internet banking or you know, online, no, not internet banking, eh? uh, using online platforms or even mobile apps. Okay, and this caters for internal, eh, sorry, uh, international workers, uh, foreign workers to send money to their home country quickly and also to uh, to be to be cheaper lah, alternative. And in terms of the trends. Okay, in digital payments and remittance, even the government has using this as part of uh, their national campaign. Okay, digital payment and remittance are expected to grow. So it's about access to digital, mostly using smartphones. Lah. We're using smartphones and in order to operate, we need the internet connection. So everybody can access this very easily nowadays. It's considered cheap as well to, to operate. Everybody have this access. Okay, especially uh, in emerging markets, including Malaysia. So government, as I said, pun dah uh, jump into this bandwagon uh, whereby some of the initiatives, they use the digital platforms. For example, ni case dulu lah, E29 in 2020. Eh? Uh, E29 Rakyat Program, whereby they transfer the funds to, the, to, the, to, the, to those who qualify using online digital uh, payment system. Okay, 2020 ni, I think masa during COVID time lah, eh, Batuan Sarah Hidup, whereby they give, I tak ingat berapa, 100 or 200 ringgit. Uh, so you can choose lah, whichever platform yang ada kat Malaysia, uh, either Boost, GrabPay, Touch and Go e-wallet, for example, and the money will be transferred to this and when the money is in these platforms, usually what we do, we, we spend it uh, tu lah, online. Lah. Kita beli uh, transactions online. Guna, kalau grab pay tu, you can order foods kat situ. You can purchase uh, uh, yang those uh, merchants that accept grab pay. Kalau touch and go ni lagi luas lah. You can pay a lot more uh, to, uh, apa? to spend lah, your money shopping. Okay, so this is a form of government initiatives to boost the economy. Okay, uh, during the, uh, those time, I'm not sure ada lagi tak uh, this e to nara yet. But uh, moving forward, perhaps expect government might use these digital payments as a form of giving out incentive, giving giving give, well, giving out subsidies even to the to the people in the future using digital payments, right? So this is the growth of digital payments in emerging markets from 2020 from 2020 to 2023. As you can see, like it's keep on growing. Okay, from 20% to 60% during these three years or four years period. Okay, uh, they triple in numbers. And in terms of the adoption of digital payments globally, countries like China and India having large large market. China, India, as you all know, lah. Market is big, okay. Uh, the population is huge, so you can see the rapid adoptions of digital payments with platforms like Alipay and Paytm leading the charge. So adoptions from Malaysian point of view, like Touch and Go, GrabPay, and Boost, will grow uh, rapidly, especially among the younger tax-heavy consumers. All right. So when we talk about payments and remittance, uh. We need to know also what is the technology behind it. Okay, so one of the technology that people use, okay, behind this payment and remittance is blockchain. Okay, I'm not going to go into detail blockchain just yet. Okay, again, I introduced myself first topic. So this is another introduction. In fact, I can just highlight a bit about blockchain. Tetapi in details, we're gonna have blockchains later in the, in the separate uh, separate topic. Okay. So blockchain technology is playing a transformative role in payments and remittance, offering decentralized, secure, and transparent method for financial transactions. So by leveraging, by using blockchain, 
payment systems can reduce the cost, increase efficiency, and minimize the fraud, both domestic and cross-border transactions. Okay, either payments or the parameters. So what is blockchain? So blockchain is a distributed ledger technology that allows transactions to be recorded in a decentralized and transparent manner. So sebelum ni kalau kita cerita pasal centralized, meaning uh, when we go to the bank, for example, the ledger itu maknanya the, the, the bookkeeping of the transactions will be recorded in that particular bank saja, centralized. Okay, when we talk about decentralized, this will be recorded in many places so that uh, the transaction is transparent. So there's a lot of places it will be recorded. It's, it's basically online, uh, in, online in different in, in different uh, apa? in different places. So kalau you delete satu, empat contohnya, there are other places yang record that transactions. Okay, so therefore it's more secure and transparent uh, sebab dia recorded uh, many places but when we, we talk about transparent dia bukanlah bermaksud accessible to everybody okay tapi maknanya uh, the apa the users especially the the owners of the transaction can see it uh, in transparent manner but unlike traditional system where transaction go through intermediaries like banks blockchain operates based on peer to peer basis p2p lah p2p p2p ataupun person to person basis so each transaction is verified by the network of computers called nodes ensure security and transparency as I mentioned. Okay, so this is just a general blockchain um, uh, introduction. We're going to see this more uh, in coming topics. So what is the impact of fintech towards the payments? Okay, uh, so it's disrupted obviously the payment industry. So cash is obviously uh, cannot play any anything here when we talk about fintech lah. so therefore uh digital wallets peer to peer nano apa tadi nano payments cryptocurrencies are key examples of uh, fintech punya impact lah. so we use this on daily basis now for everyday payments shoppings and even bill payments pun gunakan uh these digital wallets and so on so this is an example of blockchains uh, in the integration with payments and remittance. So we have companies like uh, Ripple, for example, one of the most well-known blockchain technologies used for payments, particularly for cross-border transaction for remittance. Um, and they use native cryptocurrency there, Ripple, lah, XRP, ni Ripple. Eh. Okay, Ripple blockchain technology is being adopted by major financial institutions, including Santander. Santander ni is a I think if, if, if I'm not mistaken, it's a Spanish bank, okay, Santander, tapi dia operates in UK juga. Uh, Standard Chartered is another UK uh, UK bank pun digunakan Ripple as part of uh, dia punya uh, accepted uh, currency. Okay, and also MoneyGram tadi, okay, which using RippleNet to streamline and secure their cross-border payment services. Okay, so Ripple, one of the company lah yang gunakan blockchain. We also have Stella. Okay, uh, XLM kat sini. Another blockchain platform designed for facilitating low, low cost instant cross border transactions. So the native crypto dia adalah Lumens. Okay, as I uh, mentioned earlier, kita dah discuss tadi lah, kita ada Bitcoin, kita ada uh, Ethereum and then tadi kita ada Ripple and then we have Lumens juga. So there's a plenty of cryptocurrencies so out there tapi yang paling mahal sekarang obviously bitcoin lah because it's the earliest uh, form of uh, cryptos if you want to see how much they cost now okay if you have luno you will check at luno okay so bitcoin currently trading satu bitcoin equivalent to 295,152 ringgit so this is in ringgit platform lah. So I don't know who will operate in Malaysia. So we have the Bitcoin value in ringgit. Okay, 295,000. So to put, to put it in perspective, kalau Bitcoin tadi, 295,000. Satu Bitcoin, 295,000. So kalau Ethereum, satu Ethereum equals to 10,800. 10,800 lah. So kalau tadi 295,000, bayangkan dah hundreds 
uh, belum sampai 300 lah tapi oh, dekat dengan 300,000. Okay, Ethereum just dekat dengan 11,000, 11,000. So you can see the gap between Bitcoin as the largest uh, cryptos compared to the second which is Ethereum. So Ripple just RM2.24. XRP. So dia ada macam-macam lah. Solana, Maker, Aave, Curve, Cosmos. And a lot more. So setiap satu tu value dia berbeza lah. Okay, Stella tadi sekarang value dia one Stella is 40 cent. Okay, synthetics and so on. So we have a lot of uh, apa? Uh, cryptos that we can trade lah. So Stella has partnered with companies like IBM to enable faster secure payments for businesses and individuals particularly particularly in underbank regions okay, kita dah discuss before underbank underserved so bitpesa is a blockchain uh, based remittance uh, focus in africa okay they use bitcoin as uh, as a medium of exchange so again sama jugalah reduce costs and delays associated with sending money especially to African region. Okay. So it allows you to send payments to Kenya, Nigeria, Uganda, all of those uh, African countries. Uh. Okay. And they can compete with the traditional companies like Western Union. So Western Union ni memang before this you see uh, yes. dia terkenal in the in the South Asia African region because uh, kalau you Tengok sports like cricket for example. Cricket very famous in South Asia kan. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh and then all those African countries uh, who like to play cricket. So dia punya advertisement banyak in cricket punya sports lah. Okay, Western Union. So we have cyber security issues juga lah in payments. Eh? So as digital payments grow, so do concerns about cyber security because of uh, okay data leaks before this in terms of uh, payments yang you tak authorize contohnya. So uh, companies who involve in these digital payments have to step up their games in terms of providing uh, security, the best security ever in terms of the encryption yeah, so that People cannot hack. Okay, two-factor authentication. Okay, besides uh, passwords, you can uh, authorize using add-on security, contohnya biometric security, using thumbprint, sometimes using uh, your facial ID, for example. So these are very important for protecting transactions. Okay, so in Malaysia, pun Grab Pay, Boost, Touch and Go using encryption. Okay, whereby kalau you guna online, digital, dia dah secure uh, with encrypt, encrypted punya platforms. Two-factor authentication pun ada jugalah to secure and to protect transactions. So in order to avoid ataupun to prevent fraud from happening, digital payment platforms using advanced algorithms and AI to detect uh, and prevent fraudulent activities. So they can detect lah kalau any suspicious transactions of their customers. But still as a customer, we can remain vigilant. Kita kena sentiasa berjaga-jaga lah when we talk about using our our digital platforms ataupun digital wallets and whatnot. Because it still akan ada risk. People, scammers, dia pun bila kita improve our technology, they also improve their technology to hack ataupun to scam people kan. So obviously we have to always be careful lah. When we talk about the payments. Right, so in terms of regulations in Malaysia, bank negara, security commission, tapi kebanyakannya when we talk about payments dengan remittance, memang bank negara lah. So that's why we have reg tech nanti ya, regulation technology reg tech uh, yang kita akan discuss later in terms of how uh, how bank negara even security commission have to ensure that they have complying with uh, high security standards especially from international standards and also what would be the financial regulations in order to protect uh, both the users and also all the companies lah. So uh, again, when we talk about digital era, 
we cannot run away from financial inclusion. So it provides financial services to underserved, underbanked populations, especially in developing countries, including Malaysia, lah, whereby traditional banking, uh, maybe in Malaysia, kita tak boleh lah kata kita punya traditional banking is limited, tapi uh, with the advancement of uh, online platforms uh, to ease and also to boost the usage of online platforms, so digital payment ni kena ada. Okay. So, what will be the future of digital payments? So, with the integration of AI, blockchain technology, biometric authentication, making transactions more and more secure and becoming more efficient. So, hopefully, maybe, I don't know, in future, kalau tadi I bagi example, transfer money from US to Malaysia, from UK to Malaysia, uh, vice versa, takes less than an hour. Mungkin, I don't know, in the future, it's becoming even faster. Okay, especially if we can make it more secure. Okay, bila kita boleh detect lah. Uh, the, the recipient of the money tu memang is a legit customer, re legit recipient. Okay, kita boleh verify information dia even faster. Then, the transaction mungkin boleh happen instantaneously. Maybe, I don't know, maybe not now lah. Maybe in 5, 10 years from, from now. Kita nak transfer money from Malaysia to UK, macam kita transfer within Malaysia sekarang. Kan, kalau kita buat payment, uh, guna QR code contohnya, uh, scan QR code, uh, duit now tu, make payment. Almost immediately, uh, the recipient akan dapat notification kata duit dah masuk. And then kalau kita buat bayar kat kedai, then kita boleh show kita punya receipt immediately. Okay, so maybe in the future, maybe lah itulah dia, digital payments, remittance, transfer, uh, one country to another, dia boleh berlaku dengan... Uh, lagi cepat. Okay, less than few minutes maybe. Okay, so facial recognition payments are being explored as well by fintech companies to enhance uh, security and also user experience. So in terms of remittance, for summer, using blockchain-based solutions will reduce uh, fees and also to increase speed. Okay, value and merchant trade tadi lah, already pioneering these services, making it easier for foreign workers especially to send their money home with very minimal fees. So as a conclusion, okay, this would be the conclusion of the topic. So the FinTech has transformed the way we handle payments and remittances, offering faster, cheaper and more accessible services. So the future promises further innovation, particularly in Malaysia where digital adoption is, um, you know, keep on increasing every year paving way for greater financial inclusion for everybody to, to enjoy and to experience uh, financial services. So future integration of AI, blockchain, biometric will enhance security and rising digital payments, obviously, uh, getting more customers, more users every year, okay, uh, worldwide, especially among the younger tax savvy consumers either in Malaysia or even overseas. Okay, so that's in general what we discuss about payments historically, okay, from butter system, cash, checks, uh, cash, checks, uh, then uh, moving on to digital era, lah. all right. And Malaysia as well have tap into this debt payments dengan remittance punya uh, punya wave whereby because there's demands to it okay make it easier more efficient faster and most importantly cheaper uh, for for the users to use okay sebab kalau lah uh, payments and remittance ni uh, digital dia digital payments and remittance ni cost more okay people still walaupun dia lagi mudah Mungkin akan ada yang join the market tetapi because, because it involve cost. So mungkin dia tak akan uh, jadi preferred uh, preferred uh, mode of payments lah. Okay, I bagi simple tadi je, uh, PayPal. Okay, in Malaysia it's not really popular because of the 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 punya, dia punya, punya apa? Uh, the way they, they, they operate they charge fees to the customers kan. So, Malaysia market mungkin tak, tak cannot accept 
to that model just yet. Just yet apa kan? PayPal tu dah ada since berapa tadi? 2000s pun dah ada dah kan? Dah 24 years pun still tak ramai yang guna PayPal in Malaysia but we, the the model have to be different lah to certain markets. Especially the, the developing markets lah whereby cost still play important factors. Okay, mungkin dari segi security tu uh, important tapi tak sepenting the cost. So Malaysia still tengok cost mana yang paling murah kalau free tu lagi kita akan pakai lah. So that's why uh, companies like Tashengu, uh, Boost yang yang accept this kind of uh, apa tadi P2P duit now punya moods yang yang apa yang can excel lah that's why ada satu point duit now tu want to implement ataupun want to to charge sebenarnya let me check eh. duit now charge Okay, kalau duit now, duit now tu kalau QR, there are no additional charges for now. Dia pernah nak, nak apa, nak charge, okay, nak charge sebenarnya. Uh, customers tapi the small businesses lah, especially yang yang rely on QR uh, payments. Uh, dia, dia van dia punya concern lah sebab bila charge, dia akan effect dia punya bottom line, dia punya profits. Tapi duit now transfer, consumers can send and receive money free up to RM5,000 saja. So below RM5,000 is free. However, transaction above RM5,000, they can charge some fees. So that's how duit now make money juga lah. Okay, but again, there are some banks uh, will waive okay, these transactions. Okay, transaction ni RM5,000 uh, ke atas lah. RM5,000 and below memang free, tapi RM5,000 and above. You're supposed to pay five, uh, 50 cent. Okay. Tapi bank wave ni bermaksud dia akan absorb lah. So maknanya if you transfer from one bank to another. So uh, above 5,000 ringgit. So you're supposed to pay 50 cents to do it now. Company. But the bank might absorb. Absorb tu maksudnya dia akan pay on behalf of you lah. Dia akan absorb the cost ataupun dia wave the fees. Okay. Do it now. QR tadi ada beritahu. If uh, free for individual, however, businesses who charge a fees uh, as the merchant discount rate based on percentage. Usually, kalau yang menggunakan uh, terminal lah, POS lah, point of sales punya terminal rental yang especially kalau company-company kecil lah, kalau company-company besar, mungkin dia, again, dia akan absorb this cost as well. So, all of this sebenarnya uh, sepatutnya free for users. Kita sebagai user, kita nak enjoy the service Usually we should uh, uh, use this for free lah. Tetapi from businesses point of view, uh, they have to pay some fees juga. Sebab kalau tak macam mana this company nak sustain their business kan. So the businesses have to pay the service to the provider. Okay, I think that's about it for topic number two. Okay, so... Again, there will be no class tomorrow. Okay. So, to, untuk minggu, minggu ni dah minggu berapa? Eh? This is the minggu number four. Okay. So, we've done topic number two. So, in the coming weeks, I'm going to upload uh, potentially your group assignment. Punya instruction. Mungkin bukan this week lah. Eh. This week dah nak. We have a long weekend. Cuti dari Kamis nanti di Pahali, right? 31st until the end of the week lah. Eh? So it's very long weekend. So maybe next Monday lah. Eh? Kita dah boleh uh, tengok lah what will be the group assignments will be. And together with other assessments. So minggu kelima onwards, uh, aspect some assessments will be done lah. Okay, starting week, week, week 5 and onwards. Alright, so with that, uh, thank you very much. And other soalan, nak tanya, last.
Right, so if there's no other questions, again, thank you very much. Okay, enjoy your holiday. Uh, your now almost one week, that like almost one week, eh, from Thursday onwards. So I'll see you guys, inshallah, next Monday for our next topic. And obviously, as I mentioned, uh, expect some assessment questions coming soon. All right. Okay, as alaikum and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Doctor.